How important is God's guidance to you? Do you believe in allowing God to guide every one of your steps? Do you even trust God enough to guide you along the paths of your life? As a believer, you must answer yes to these questions. God's guidance must be important and paramount to you. You should trust God enough to commit your life to His hands and allow Him to guide your steps. Ensure you stay through until the end of this video and see several reasons why you must allow God to guide your steps. Before going on, we encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't. God's guidance speaks of the divine direction and wisdom that God offers to those who seek His will. Divine guidance refers to God telling us what to do, when, and how to do it. Throughout the Bible, God is depicted as a guiding light, leading His people through the complexities of life. As a child of God, you must let God guide your steps. We do not have precise details about where we ought to go, hence the need for God to guide us. You should allow God to direct you on where to go and what to do. Whether it's major life decisions or daily choices, God knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning. He is Alpha and Omega. All of our lives are like an open book in His hands. He knows your current position. He knows where you are heading. Now, you may want to ask, why should I allow God to guide my steps? Here are some reasons. The first reason is because He is God and knows all things. As mentioned earlier, God is all-knowing. He knows everything. God knows the deepest intents of your hearts. He knows your deepest secrets. He also knows what will happen in the coming days and years. He knows the aftermath of every step you would take. Who else would you have to direct and guide the course of your life other than He, who knows the beginning and end? You should allow God to guide your steps because He knows best. Whatever He tells you is the truth. God is not a man that He should lie. He will not guide you along the wrong path. He knows that roads end, which seems very good to you. He is the one that existed before you were born. He will keep existing after your death. He knows your present and your future. He knows you better than you know yourself. You can bank on whatever advice or information He uses to guide you. That is the right way to follow. For instance, you should allow God to guide you in choosing a life partner. This is going to be a lifelong journey. Who else is better to ask what the future looks like other than the Alpha and Omega? Himself. Humans can only make predictions and assumptions. Only God knows the future. You should also allow God to guide you in other areas of your life, ranging from the top choices to the seemingly little ones. From your career. Choice to the city you will settle in, you must let God guide you in making your choices. Second. You should allow God to guide your steps because He desires the best for you. God has your best interests at heart. He loves you. There is nothing in this world that can be used to describe the love that God has for you. That is why He wants you to prosper. He does not wish for evil to happen to you. So, He wants to lead you aright. He wants to guide you onto a path that will lead you to rest and not distress. God has great plans for your life. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God wants to give you a good future. You should allow Him to guide your steps so He can lead you into the great future He has planned for you. God will lead you into blessings and not into failure. He will guide you into making progress and not regression. He will grant you promotions and not demotions. Divine guidance is a sure guarantee for success in any of your life's ventures. However, this will only happen when you give Him the chance to lead you. The third reason is that your knowledge is limited. You must acknowledge that your wisdom is limited compared to God's omniscience. It is important to make plans about one's life but you must do it with divine help and guidance. You cannot afford to plan your entire life based on your wisdom alone. 
Planning your life with the guidance of God comes with more assurance of success. The Bible says we can't do anything without Him. This is not because we cannot do anything. It's because we can't do anything successfully without Him. In the book of Proverbs, King Solomon says a person falls where there is no guidance, but there is safety in an abundance of counselors. You must allow God to guide you in your steps to ensure safety. No matter how knowledgeable you are, your knowledge pales in comparison to the wisdom of God. Even all the discoveries and inventions of science cannot measure up to His wisdom. You must know that fruitfulness results from a life that God guides. You should let God guide you in confusing situations where you have expended all your wisdom. Some situations make you look foolish no matter how wise you think you are, and the only thing that can save you from them is divine guidance. You might have an impossible boss at work, and you don't want to tell lies or cut corners, yet you want to keep your job. You want to be submissive to your boss, you don't want to fall from grace, and you still want to submit to God. How do you go about that? How do you negotiate your path? Divine Guidance If you let God guide you on what to do about confusing situations like this, you will see His display of wisdom and marvel. I therefore beseech you to submit to His guidance today. Another reason why you should allow God to guide you in your steps is because God wants to lead you. God wants to guide you as His child. God desires to lead you so that He can be in control of your life. Psalms 32 8 captures this intention of God when it says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. God wants to instruct and teach you. With His loving eye, He wants to counsel you on how you should go. God wants to guide you at every step of your life. What a loving Father He is. The role of guidance is associated with a shepherd. Shepherding involves leading and directing sheep to walk in a certain direction to help them get pastures to feed on. God wants to be your shepherd. He wants to shepherd your life so that you can say, like the psalmist, that you lack nothing because the Lord is your shepherd. It would interest you to know that what qualifies you as a child of God is that God and His Spirit lead you. Romans 8, 12 says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So, if you are a true child of God, He will lead you. As a true child of God, the best you can do is allow Him. There are several other reasons why you should allow God to guide you in your steps. But one more mentioned in this video is that several benefits come with divine guidance. Submitting to the guidance of God has several benefits. With divine guidance, you will enjoy peace. He will grant you blessings without sorrows. He will grant you favor to ensure you obtain what you seek. Because you are following His guidance, He will cause breakthroughs for you. Another amazing benefit that comes with divine guidance is divine resources. When God guides your steps, He will provide all that you need. When you follow divine guidance, you will be exempted from destruction. In the case of Prophet Elijah, he was exempted from famine because he followed God's guidance. When all of Israel was suffering from famine, God devised several means to ensure that Elijah was getting fed. He drank from the brook. The ravens supplied him with food. Even the widow of Zarephath was orchestrated to meet with him and feed him. He enjoyed divine resources and was exempted from the calamity in the land. Why? because he listened to God and allowed God to guide his steps. 1 Kings 17, 2, 9 says, Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Leave here, turn eastward and hide in the Kareth ravine, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the Kareth ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Some time later the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, 
go at once to Zerath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. An important lesson from Prophet Elijah was that he kept listening to God. When the brook dried, he did not despair and began to blame God for leading him to go there. Instead, he waited on the word of God again for the next step. You must learn to trust God as he guides you. When you experience a hiccup along the way, you must not turn around and blame him. Instead, you must wait for him to take the next step. You must be assured that he desires a good ending for you. So, believe in him as he guides you. When God guides your steps in life, you will fulfill your destiny and purpose. Remember, it is his purpose for you. Therefore, he is the only one who can guide you right into fulfilling his purpose. You must follow God's leading to avoid frustration in life and destiny. When God guides you, you will make the most of every opportunity that comes your way. Also, when God guides your steps, you have allowed him to go before you. When God goes before you, he clears everything on your path before you get there. He takes away every obstacle, no matter how old they are. No matter what demonic forces are sponsoring those obstacles, God will go ahead of you and remove them. When God goes ahead of you, he will make a way for you. You can confidently believe that when God goes ahead of you, you will stay ahead. This is what is called divine backing, which comes from divine guidance. When God backs you up, he will help you accomplish things that defy human imagination. He will work with you, for you, and for you. With God's guidance, you also enjoy divine preservation and protection. When God is leading you along the path, and you are following, every enemy that you encounter becomes God's enemy because he is the one leading you in that path. And who can stand against the Lord? No one can, no one will. With this, you are divinely preserved and protected. Knowing why you should allow God to guide your steps, you may want to ask, how does God even guide me? The primary way God guides you is through his word. The Bible is the manual God gives us to follow as we live. It is our guidebook for life. The psalmist was one of the people in the scriptures who understood the necessity and authority of God's words. Psalms 119, 105 and 133 say, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Direct my footsteps according to your word, let no sin rule over me. The word of God is designed to provide guidance. A lamp and a light both provide guidance. The word of God directs, encourages, commands, and informs us to live according to his ways. God's word illuminates how we should go physically, emotionally, and mentally. His word is designed to influence the ways we think, feel, and act. The Bible has specific instructions and clear boundaries, such as family, holiness, and social interactions. If we follow the direction in Scripture, we will discover a wellspring of peace and righteousness that completely drenches every part of our hearts with passion and purpose. If we follow His guidance through His Word, then no sin will be able to rule over us. But then, for God's Word to guide you, you must study it. You can only be guided by what you know. Therefore, you must spend time reading and studying the Word of God. You cannot have a casual relationship with God and expect Him to guide you. To know what His Word says takes time, commitment, and dedication. If you want God's Word to order your steps, then there is no substitute for this. You must be diligent in the studying of the Word. When studying the Word of God, you must believe in it. It is not enough to know what the Word says, you must also believe it. Many people know what the Word of God says but do not believe in it. To be guided by God's Word, you must know and believe what it says. Then, when you have believed in the Word of God that you know, you must do what it says. This is where obedience comes in. God's guidance through His Word will be effective only when you obey what the Word commands you to do. 
as wonderful as it is to know God's word and as necessary as it is to believe it. None of that matters if you don't do what it says. This is proof that you believe what God says. It is impossible for God's word to order your steps if you are unwilling to obey it. Obedience is the difference between God's word ordering your steps or not. If you want God's word to order your steps, then it cannot be a suggestion. You must surrender to it and change your life to fit God's requirements. This means you cannot be selective in what you will follow. You cannot always choose the things that fit your lifestyle. This is the most challenging aspect of having God order your steps. When God guides you through the precepts of His Word, it gives you comfort and confidence that you are on track because the Word of God is true. Another way God guides us is by His Spirit. The Spirit of God was credited to us at the point of salvation. He came with the salvation package. When the Holy Spirit comes to live within us, God begins communicating through His Spirit. This communication can be through our thoughts, conscience, or inner witness. All of these ways are means by which God can guide us. His Spirit will bring us into all truths, as the Bible said. The Holy Spirit is the intermediary between us and the Father. The Spirit of God also communicates God's voice to us. With the help of the Holy Spirit, you can hear the voice of God. In the Old Testament, it was rampant for them to hear the voice of God clearly and audibly. For instance, Moses heard God's voice. The Bible even says that God spoke to him mouth to mouth according to Numbers 12, 8. From the burning bush down to the Israelites' walk in the wilderness, Moses heard God's voice audibly. Even though this isn't common today, the Holy Spirit still speaks to us through the inner witness. To be guided by the Holy Spirit, you must be in a cordial relationship with Him. The Holy Spirit must be able to compel you. And you must be willing to obey Him. He wants to speak with you. Your job is to keep your ears open and follow His leading. God often speaks to us by His Spirit when we pray. Prayers should be about you talking to God and listening to Him. If, whenever we pray, we only speak to God and never take the time to listen, then we miss out on what God might be saying to us. Prayer is not a monologue. It should be a dialogue. God said through the prophet Isaiah that when we come to him, we should come with open ears and listen so that we may live. Another way in which God guides us is by counsel from godly authorities. God has placed some authority over us to guide us. They have gone ahead of us and walked the path we are treading now. These authorities could be parents, teachers, pastors, mentors, and even senior colleagues. However, an important criterion is attached to this means by which God can guide you. What qualifies them as a medium of God's guidance is that they must be godly. That is, they must be in the way of the Lord. That way, you can be sure they are connected with God and that their counsel is sourced from Him. But even with that, you must check their counsels with the standards of the Word of God. Having someone as an authority over you does not automatically mean they are a medium of God's guidance for you. You must ensure they are believers who have a relationship with God and submit to His direction. God can communicate an instruction to authorities over you so that they can get it across to you. But if they were not connected with God, that would not happen. However, when God sends guidance to you through godly authorities over you, yield to them and listen accordingly. You must believe and acknowledge that God can be trusted. When you believe this, you can entrust your life to His hands so that He may guide you in your steps. As you decide to let God guide your steps, there are some things that you should take note of. First, if you are willing to submit and acknowledge God's guidance, you must have a heart willing to follow His leading. You must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. This is the hallmark of God's guidance in your life. Remember Father Abraham in the Scriptures. God led him to move out of his father's land into an unknown location. God only said that he was going to show him the land. He did not give him any specifics. 
But Abraham followed God's guidance. He set out from his father's household with all he had and began the journey based on the leading of God. Because he had a willing heart, from that moment onwards, God coordinated his entire life. He led him through different situations. One thing that was consistent with him was that he kept obeying God's leading. Even after he had journeyed with God for years, and there was a call from God that he should walk before him and be blameless, he still obeyed. One would wonder what else God wanted from him. He had been living his life obeying God, and he still asked him to be blameless. But Abraham still obeyed God. His willing heart is something that you should be emulate today. Another person who continuously followed God's guidance in the scriptures was Moses. When God appeared to Moses and commissioned him with the great task of bringing the Israelites out of Egypt, he had a glimpse of how massive the task was and he told God that he wasn't capable of doing it. But God assured him of his guidance. He said to him, I am that I am has sent you. This assured Moses. And truly, what helped him all through this mission was that he leaned on God. He got timely instructions on what to do at the time. He could not have. Dealt with Pharaoh with his wisdom alone, he allowed God to guide his steps, and God gave him and the nation of Israel victory. God also guided him on how to lead the children of Israel. God gave him the wisdom to interact with them so that they could trust him and submit to his leadership. All through their wilderness experience, God led the Israelites through Moses. And when Moses' time was up, God continued through Joshua. Joshua followed in the steps of Moses as he also diligently submitted to the guidance of God as he led them to their promised land. Now, if you have been living your life without prioritizing the guidance of God before now, you have to begin with a prayer of surrender to God. You must pray to God to tell him that you are ready to let him guide your steps and take control of your life. With a prayer, you must decide that you are now going to approach decision-making in a better way, with more wisdom. You will no longer make decisions without consulting with God. You must also pray to God for wisdom, and he will give it to you. James chapter 1, 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Afterward, you must begin to seek to know the word of God. Commit to the study of the scriptures. The Bible is a rich source of wisdom and guidance. For believers, regularly meditate on scriptures to align your thoughts with God's principles. Then, you must cultivate a good relationship with the Holy Spirit. Be intentional about growing your relationship with Him. Then, you must be sensitive to His leading. Be attentive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit inside of you. Another important virtue you must add to yourself is patience. You must learn to be patient when receiving divine guidance. Patience is key in discerning divine guidance for your life. Then, you must approach divine guidance with humility. Acknowledge that God's ways are greater than yours. Prophet Isaiah reminds us that as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are God's ways higher than ours. Acknowledge that you are limited in your wisdom, so you need the Lord to guide your steps. Let God guide your steps. Avoid self-reliance. Rely on divine guidance other than relying on your wisdom. Have you not read from Proverbs chapter 3, 5, 6? It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. Do you want your paths to be straight? Then, you should let God guide your steps. Embrace divine guidance today and watch how your life will take a good turn. You stand to enjoy many benefits when you let God guide your steps. You will be at the center of God's will for your life. You will be empowered to fulfill your destiny and purpose. With all these, your life will turn out just as God designed it to be. Let us pray. Dear God, I want to thank you for all that you have done for me and for all that you will be doing for me. Thank you, Lord, 
for creating me in your likeness and always wanting the best for me. Thank you for bringing your word to me today. I have received encouragement, liberation, peace, and intensified desire for divine guidance. Thank you, Lord, for your love, always revealed in your word. I am grateful that you have reminded me to let you guide my steps. I have been reminded not to rely on my understanding. I have been shown why I should allow you to guide my steps. I have also received insight into how you can guide me. I have been made to see the importance of waiting for your guidance. I have learned that several benefits come with divine guidance, and now my heart is renewed by this truth. Lord, I acknowledge that I have tried to guide myself so many times. However, this has only led to more troubles and confusion in my life. I therefore ask for mercy. Please forgive me of all my actions. From now on, I make a pledge to always wait on your leading. Thank you, Lord, because you love me enough to guide my steps. Thank you because you want the best for me. Thank you because you want to lead me into the great future you have planned for me. Lord, I ask that you help me to allow divine guidance in my life. Help me to prioritize this above anything else in my life. I do not want to rely on my understanding. I want to approach decision-making with more wisdom. I no longer want to navigate through life by myself. Please, Lord, grant me the grace to do these. Dear God, I also want to enjoy the benefits of divine guidance. From today, as I have decided to let you guide my steps, I will begin to enjoy those benefits. I pray that I will enjoy peace and favor. I begin to enjoy divine backing. I will begin to achieve accomplishments that defy human understanding. I pray that you go before me and make every crooked way straight. Grant me divine resources and let me experience breakthroughs in all my ways. I will fulfill my destiny and purpose as you guide my steps in life. I will be exempted from troubles. Lord, I pray for wisdom. I pray that you help me to submit to you. I pray that you help me to cultivate a good relationship with the Holy Spirit. Help me to be committed to the study of your word. From now on, I choose to be sensitive in prayers as you communicate instructions to me. Give me the grace to be patient. Help me to approach divine guidance with humility. Help me to trust you with my whole life. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. If this video has inspired you, kindly subscribe to the channel and share it with your loved ones. God bless you. See you in the next video.